conversation. Mm -hmm. Nicholas Badminton is here. He is a futurist, and he's joining us for his top trends of 2018. And you're calling this the year of radical creativity? Yeah. What does that mean? It means that, um, you know, all these big, grandiose ideas of moonshots and moving to Mars and whatever, right. fine. But what we have to do is, from the ground up, start thinking together as companies and individuals about new and radical ways to, to build solutions that change the world that we live in. In a positive way? In a very positive way. Okay, yes. well, let's talk about some of those yeah. ways. Like, one thing you're talking about is artificial intelligence in the real world. Yeah. Now, this is, I mean, it, this is pervasive, and we don't even realize how much we're surrounded by it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And now we've got devices in our homes that, that listen yes. to our conversation you know Amazon and, and Google yes. and, and Apple and whatever I find it creepy other people love it yeah I was at home last night and uh, there are these kids like they were five years old uh, having chats to, to this little machine in the corner singing songs together and searching the internet it's kind of interesting yeah your so second your second one is smart cities yeah so, so um, you know, technology sensors, we're surrounded by cameras and sensors that yep. collect data. You know, city and ecosystems like, you know, Vancouver, we can manage them better if, we've, if we know what's going wrong at the right times. And we can connect those systems, we can reduce waste and improve costs and create new jobs. And that's what Smart Cities is all about. And there's some really big investments happening all, all around, over North, North America. Um, around like down in Arizona with Bill Gates, now in Toronto with Google, and I know that Vancouver's looking at smart city solutions as well. So give me some yeah. more concrete examples of how we could see that. Yeah, so, so imagine if, if you're walking through a neighborhood and, and suddenly um, it, it knows who you are by, by the device in your pocket, and, and then it can like, um, advise you of where to go or, or what you need um, in, in your home, or, or maybe your, your car needs some servicing, and it can do some recommendations that way. Smart lighting can, it can improve how uh, cities are managed. Mm -hmm. It can save money. Smart parking. You know, all these things, very practical right. things, are going to change smart cities. But, OK. Uh, <laughs> Does any of this concern you, the fact that we're losing the ability to think for ourselves and to think, to my, I haven't changed the oil in my car for six months, maybe it's yeah. time for an oil change, or, you know, maybe, mm. maybe I need to go pay some bills, maybe I need to, like... Not to mention I, privacy. I, yeah. Well, there's the, pri me. the privacy is the one thing, but I yeah. just feel that we're dumbing down ourselves as a society by letting artificial intelligence run our lives. I think, I think the, the key to artificial intelligence coming into our lives is removing the things that we don't really want to think about. Do you really want to think about the oil in your car? Would you rather have your car drive itself to the garage to get its oil changed, right? Okay, I'm with you there. Uh, and, and there's these things, right? So you'd rather focus on, on, on the work that you're doing, the good in the world, um, your family, things like that. So I think that we can be liberated by taking the mundane algorithmic tasks away from us mm. and we can enrich our lives. The trouble is, big companies are trying to persuade us to encode our entire lives. Mm -hmm. So that's where we have to be careful. We have to be careful about what we accept into our lives. I think that you raise a really good point. I, the mundane tasks, like maybe the automatic grocery ordering is taken care of for me because I'm out of milk. Yep. Great. I can think about other stuff. Yeah, and there's, there's patterns actually around groceries that are trying to predict what you need when you need it. So you might run out of eggs and then five minutes later there's someone at the door to deliver you a new box. So as long as I get over the creep factor of that, it yeah, would be very, definitely. very helpful. Yeah, really. definitely, yeah. Okay, you want to talk about uh, cyber warfare. Mm -hmm. So now this sounds terrifying. Yeah. Um, so, so some people uh, have been watching and, and seeing all these different attacks like Mirai and WannaCry. You know, people hijacking hospitals and businesses, yes. taking over servers, and you have to give them, like, money through... Like, I know someone had happened to a dentist friend yeah. of mine. Yeah, happened. absolutely. Yes. So um, what's really interesting is cyber warfare costs about $5 billion a year right now, uh -huh. and there's a ransomware attack every four seconds. So, so, is that true? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we're, we're, we're surrounded. But now it, it's state-sponsored uh, cyber warfare that's sort of kicking in as well. Well, where you've got um, nefarious countries trying to take over utilities and electricity grids and whatever. So um, there's a big push, um, both at a personal level, at a business level, and at the government level as well, to protect our countries. And it's really, really important what's, gonna, what's going down right now. And on a personal level, how is the technology? Is it coming along to protect ourselves? Yeah. Um, so, you know, make sure that you've got really strong passwords. Uh. Like, you know, it, it's <laughs> as simple as that. Yes. But you can, you can install all sorts of software. You can, you can encrypt your hardware disks you can protect yourselves for sure cryptocurrencies yes what's going to happen we'll talk about that but what's going to happen when we have natural disasters and you can't use uh our interact we can't use their debit cards we can't use credit cards and yeah. good old hard cash is going to have to hopefully buy us what we may need yeah. cryptocurrencies is it going to keep on going like we've seen with 
It went coin insane. Longer. Bitcoin went it's insane. It's gone crazy this the last year. 18 months. Yeah, so absolutely incredible. Well, um, so Bitcoin set out to be decentralized to, to free us from this burden of traditional banking, and it's kind of become traditional banking and investments for Except many you people. You just can't see it. No, exactly, <laughs> right? So, so now, um, it, yes, it's still going to rise. It, it's, there's a lot of pumping and dumping in terms right. of investment. Mm -hmm. Um, let's just assume that it's worth nothing and it's going to have a, a practical uh, use at some point. Um, so, you know, it's not supposed to be the, the 20 plus thousand Canadian dollars it is per Bitcoin today. It's going to be a lot more uh, mellow and it's going to be very different. I think you're going to see new cryptocurrencies right, that, that, that operate in a way that's uh, a lot more sustainable, um, that, that are very practical. So what excites you, what scares you as a futurist? I think what worries me is um, humans not knowing when to stop. Mm. How far do we go with technology and is there good in the technology that we're building? I talk about love and wisdom and we have to, whatever we do in the world around building technologies um, from a research perspective or whatever, they have to deliver something back that's positive. Social networks are kind of failed on that, on that and they're uh -huh. trying to turn much. their ship right now. I think that security systems are trying to do some good. Smart cities, they need to be for the good of the people and not just collecting and selling data. Right. So not a nanny state. I, I think right? we, yeah, we just need to create some boundaries that for, for the good of you and I. And quickly, finally, we want to talk about energy. Yeah. And mm. what's happening with that? So it's interesting. Um, I, I just read the World Bank has stopped funding any fossil fuels projects going ahead. So, so that's fascinating to me. For, for over 18 months, I've been going to resource conferences and challenging them about Canada and, and oil and fossil fuels and saying it's going to end. And we have to be prepared for that. So we're heading towards a renewable energy future. There's lots of really interesting projects that are looking at everything from evaporation to hydro to, to wind. Nicholas, to actually we are yeah. out of time. And yeah. I wish you could stay for another hour. This was so great. Thanks for coming in. Thank and you. thank you for watching.